Ugh. Say that shit. Woof. Wait, what? <laughs> Cheers. Welcome to church. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Amateur Intellectuals. My name is Kendall and I'm here with my co-host, Caitlin. Hi. Hi, Kendall. Hello. Hi, my love. I, I realize that I don't do the thing, I don't do like the little quick intro and I probably should. Nah. Like if you if you have if you haven't been here, we're gonna we're gonna learn a little bit, we're gonna laugh a little bit, we're gonna drink a lot of it. No, that's <laughs> not true. Uh, all equal parts, everything in moderation. Um, and if you're not new here, welcome back. Uh, good to see you again. The best part of seeing you is that I can't see you. Yeah. Um, Every good friendship. <laughs> just knowing that you're here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about, let me pull up my notes. Um, don't leave right when I say this, because we're not going to be talking about <laughs> that part of it. <laughs> I love it. Don't leave. Don't leave before I say it. Just trust me, please. <laughs> We're going to be talking about habits. Yeah. No, good. Um, I know that there's a lot of, and I'm probably going to say this six times during this episode, like there's a lot of self-help. There's a lot of advice. This episode is not about that. This episode is about the brain. And something that I learned while reading about this that I just think is bananas. We um, are not here to help you. <laughs> we are here to soothe you or maybe distract you, but we are not here to help you. Like, make that clear right out front. Right. <laughs> Amateur means exactly that. Not experts in the field. Though you do have a... Do you have a... Is that a doctorate? Me? I wish. A master's. No. Mm-mm. I have a master's. Master's. Which, what's the fucking difference? I mean, I mean, another year and a lot of stress and money. And a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, the scene has uh, changed on my end. I'm now in Arizona. Um, I, I almost got out of the bus... Um, at the state line uh, to take a picture just to tag Megan McCain um, <laughs> just to let her know that there's a new princess of Arizona and it's me bitch she needs um, to move she needs some fucking humility if anyone on the planet does and like I've anyway. wanted to like her I've wanted to like her <laughs> I have had all of my energy like please just stop being you and then I will I, because I liked John McCain I liked yeah. him but she's just off the rails so anyway good take it over it, take the throne baby who cares it, thank you mm. thank you it feels good um, yeah it feels good. I'm on some <laughs> public land in a, in a national forest, um, not so very far from a place called Sholo, which has the second highest crime rate in all of Arizona. So oh. um, if you're a person of faith, pray. If you're a person of energy, burn some incense and light some crystals on fire or something. <laughs> because it's a little close. And right before we went live, I heard a gunshot. But that's fine. Stop it's like it. illegal hunting or something. You know, it's not a big deal. Okay, um, Kendall, I'm not worried at all, at all, about this, so I'm so glad you gave us, can you just text me your coordinates for fun, so that I just have Live, (laughs) just always. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I didn't notice it, because I haven't been driving into this spot uh, during the day, I've only been here for a couple days, there was like, um, I'm assuming elk bones, like- like dra- draped in the trees like mm-hmm. they're, they're like sorry. up in the air draped in the trees like very Blair Witch yeah like I don't think elk do that <laughs> no. they, uh, I don't think they like hang themselves or their brethren Climb on up. a tree yeah so. yeah I mean if they have to listen to Megan McCain that long they might but <laughs> I th- <laughs> Swoosh. That was a good one. 
That We're was gonna good. talk about habits. We're gonna talk about habits. I'm gonna change it. <laughs> I'm gonna change the subject because I could talk about Arizona for, and I haven't even seen most of it yet. But um, let's talk about the bad habits of Arizona and uh, how we can with, fix it. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> keep it light. Literally. Keep it light. It's fine. I I keep remembering that this is Krista Cinnamon, Kristen Cinnamon's state, mm-hmm. and I just every time I go, ugh, ugh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. She looks cool. She posted a cool pic. Did you see that on her Instagram? She posted a cool pic. She's wearing a ring that said like "fuck off," <laughs> and she looks like a cool hipster, like got it going on. Mom, is she a mom? Mm. <laughs> I don't know either. Mm. I don't fucking know either. But her politics fucking suck. So, yes. um, I just tweeted that it feels like appropriation. You don't get to look that cool. You don't get to look. You know, like a leftist, and then just be a, a, a stump on the log. What do you thank you? How do you say that? Yes, like a stick in the mud, like a super stick in the mud conservative yeah. bump on the log. Yes, that's it. Yes. Anywho, um, that makes me want to hiss or like rattle. An <laughs> Arizona Diamondback. That's right. Anyway. Put that thing up. <laughs> um, so I struggled a bit with the question because, again, this topic is going to be... I'm going, like, super... Like, I read an article about a guy that wrote a book that I was like, ooh, that sounds really interesting. As opposed to, like, here's nine ways to break bad habits and here's good habits ooh. to be a successful entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like, bleh. um, So I struggled with the question, so it's a bit long-winded. Just like me. No. Um, Perfectly winded. But. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I have been doing some research on habits and there is seemingly some consensus. Consensus within the experts or bloggers, whoever the fuck these people are, mm-hmm. who have the same three bad habits at the top of the list. Oh, fuck. And I just want to get your opinion on it. Yeah. Because I don't want to tell you how I feel about it yet. Okay. Can you guess what you would think? Like, if you look at 15 lists, 90% of them have the same three at the top. Can you guess what they are? Okay. So I'm just going to shot in the dark here. Have no idea. But if these are people who okay. are, I presume, successful in some way that are writing these, mm-hmm. yeah, I would say mm, it could be anything. But I'm just going to I'm just going to take a dart and close my eyes and throw it. OK, do it. Ca- throw that caffeine bitch. addiction or habit. OK, work. Uh, I would say um Uh, So a habit of, like, over-perfectionism or some sort of variant of that. So, like, like something like, I am not good enough or I constantly critique or my standard is really high. You know, all the different ways you can say the same thing. Like, I would say some sort of perfectionism or, you know, problem Mm -hmm. with perfectionism. Uh, Fuck. Okay. Oh, hang on, give me a second. So, uh, habit is just, I mean, that just sounds like addiction. Like, caffeine just sounds like addiction. Just sounds like a habit. <laughs> um, and, and, and I'm going to say, like, really critical of other people. <laughs> I'm making this up. Ooh, okay, I don't know. Tell me. Sounds... I have no idea. Okay, so all three of yours seem much more sophisticated um no they don't correct i would say no no listen to this shit listen to this shit this blew my fucking mind because i was like that means that i'm just a shit person Mm. if these are the top three bad habits i do all of these every day 10 times Mm. you ready Mm -hmm. smoking cussing nail biting oh oh here i I was here i was thinking about like this whole like behavior. philosophical oh, shit. Oh my god! Right, right, right. Smoking, cussing, and nail biting. Nail biting. I'm like, whoever the fuck is writing this doesn't have any fucking problems. Oh. Like, not one problem. Do you? Do you? Um, we know 
I know you smoke. <laughs> we know you cuss. <laughs> Don't ever change, ever. That's not a bad habit. That's a good habit. Um, Cussing? What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember, there's, like, studies that say, like, people with higher IQs tend to cuss more. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, 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 anyway. Uh, 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 uh. But then, but then <laughs> nail biting, like, do you, do you bite your nails? Oh, yeah. Do you bite them oh, down yeah. to the studs? I mean, no. Um, my mother pointed this out to me years ago. She was like, I bit my nails. I get the psychology of it. What you're doing, you, they get too long. You let them grow and they get too long for your liking. And then you bite them and then they look like shit. And then you wait for them to grow back to where they were. And then you bite that off and it looks like shit. So you're just constantly trying to fix it. But it always looks bad. Oh, I mean, I bite my hangnails, which is disgusting and awful. But... I bite my hangnails, and it has nothing to do with my status of my nails. It has nothing to do with yeah. how dry my nails are. It has to do with how anxious I am in that moment. Uh-huh. Like, it's a, 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 listen, I, I'm not perfect, whatever. I know, you find it hard to believe. But no, I, I, I bite my hangnails because if I'm feeling really out of control in that moment or I'm really uncomfortable in something, uh-huh. I don't like sitting in that feeling. Uh-huh. So I like doing something about it. And so I clip, I just gnaw on my little hangnails uh, to fix that. And like on the little corner. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's like, oh, I'm manicuring myself. Look at how well I'm grooming. I think it could also be just like, hi, I don't like what I'm feeling right now. Or, hey, this is something I can maybe oh, fix and definitely. control, you know? Oh, yeah. I think a lot of people do, 99% of people do it, like, as an anxious thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I do. I really think that I do it just because it gets too long. And then I, I mean, I have caught myself doing it anxiously. Yeah. But I don't think that's the main reason that I do it. What am I, when I'm anxious, I smoke cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Tell me. Why do you why do you yeah. smoke? What pulls you to it in the moment that you need it? I'm a really strange smoker, I think. I don't smoke at all during the day. At all. And then like after work, I can put back a pack. I try not to. I usually don't do a whole pack. Yeah. But Sounds like I a like treat. Wait. E- I, well, yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah. Like I made it's it through like the a, day I fucking deserve this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then like I can't have one. I have to have two because if I have one, it makes me no- it makes me nauseous and nervous. Mm. And then if I have a second one, I like settle into like okay. And then, I mean, you know, if you have any like sort of drink, it's just like through the roof. You yeah. like just start chain smoking. Just all the cigarettes. Um, yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. 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 I tried peanuts for a while because it's something to do with, and a lot of smokers say this. It's something to do with your hands, like having something to do with your hands. Mm-hmm. I tried peanuts, um, but they're just so fatty. And I mean, like, I would just sit there for hours and just crack peanuts and eat them. And, like, you can't do that every night for four hours. Yeah. You're right. I mean, you're right. The model's lunches were cigarettes and water. So, I mean, like, right. you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it. I mean, I get that it's like a, again, it's like a, almost like a fidgety self-soothing thing that you need i mean self-soothing i do the same thing i honestly i do the same thing with wine in the evening like i am ready Uh for my wine ready for her now and it doesn't Mm -hmm. always like i don't even want it sometimes like so uh, let me ask you this like when you're smoking a cigarette it can't always be like, yes, this is the thing I needed. Like, it always, like, scratches no. the itch or whatever. There's got to be times where no. you're like, this just isn't even. But I am glad I did it. I stand by it. Do you feel that at all? Like, it, the moment isn't there, but the habit of doing it is comforting? The habit of doing it. It's 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 literally just the doing something with yeah. my hands. It's like... MSG you should like fuck with your legs is what they used to think mm-hmm. was restless leg sl- syndrome. Yeah, yeah. A- and like people like flip like couldn't sleep because their legs. I feel that way just sitting at night watching TV or anything. Yes. I have to move my hands. Oh, I do too. I uh, oh my god. 
we we are the same. We just discovered something. No, I'm the same. I struggle. I really struggle sitting still for so long. And I start, again, I start scratching at my hangnails or mm-hmm. or I'll go get yeah. a glass of wine or whatever because it's just something to hold in my hand. It's something to do. And I don't even yep. set it yep. down. Like, I don't even set down the wine glass. I hold it the entire time because it's part of the process, you know? It's part of the thing. Yeah. Right. Oh, my gosh. I, it's really I don't think at all. Yeah, it is. I think we just discovered uh, what RLS is restless, like, restless arms. Ram. Restless arm syndrome. Ras. <laughs> Ras. I can't spell today. Mm-mm. No, no, no. I, I uh, totally understand. It, it makes it does make a lot of sense. Like, honey, we need to take a fucking knitting class or something. We got to put our fingers to work in a productive way. <laughs> literally <laughs> funny you just uh, yeah that would do it i think that would do it because like there are days that like i'll go i can go two or three days without smoking a cigarette and not be like batshit mm-hmm. um i don't and, and like i know everyone's like it's not the addiction i'm sure i'm addicted to nicotine times 10 i'm sure i am I mean, but like whatever. there's there's something about it's just the hands thing if i could just yeah so i know somebody um, that quit smoking and had the same issue and then this person gained a ton of weight after they quit smoking because it was th- like th- i think the need to address the soothing feeling wasn't mm-hmm. kind of properly handled so when this individual i'm being so careful when this individual uh smoked it was never like a big issue but then it was a food that replaced the feeling of like again yeah. the habit the i think i think it's the habit the habit because think about it i mean nicotine and and calories or food might give you some overlap in like good feelings but it's not the same thing oh absolutely it's not the same thing so like absolutely. if you're replacing one with the other you have to think that there's got to be something about the the process that is comforting or you know serving you in some way yes interesting these are already in my notes i read this though interesting that you brought that up because they were trying to explain we'll get into the three processes of what's called the habit loop but oh, there's the I feel third like there's thing gonna be is... here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's okay i'm excited <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very interesting. I was like, well, shit, I, I didn't know. And, and you know, we all know the cliche, the 21 days, the all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to break a habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It's it's it, This is going to be a little bit more of like a psychological, um, I'm no expert, but I read something that an expert wrote. So how's that? That makes me a fucking expert. That makes you an amateur, amateur intellectual. intellectual. This is where we go here, huh? Pass the baton to others. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Cited sources, you can find them at the bottom. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and introduce the drink of the episode. Um, you know, I, I wanted it to just be a little... Um, I have an issue with compliance. And um, I, I found the drink that was obviously the, the bad habit. Um, was the name of it. And it was uh, peach schnapps uh, and vodka in a shot. It's just a spiked peach shot snops shot mm-hmm. and i thought we could really do better you know <laughs> this close to easter we can do better so this is called the healthy habit Ooh. okay mm-hmm. and it looks fabulous so special thanks to vinepair.com they have gorgeous photography of this cocktail you will want to make it i promise so take a look um what we've got is wait I accidentally highlighted something. No, I didn't. Uh, two ounces of gin, one half ounce of beet juice, one half ounce of lime juice, one half ounce of lavender infused simple syrup, which is just sugar water with some lavender in it. You can make it at home. One teaspoon of cayenne. Yes, Ooh. mama. Ooh. One Interesting egg Interesting turn. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Mm-hmm. And one ounce of kombucha. Stop it. Yeah, it looks amazing. And it's got this like nice frothy, the egg white and the kombucha. And it's got this deep red, purple beet color. Um, I don't have um, supplies. But if I did, I would make this drink. Um, this is... 
this one looks uh, fucking amazing. So the directions, add all ingredients except kombucha to a cocktail shaker with no ice. Shake vigorously for 10 to 15 seconds. Add ice to your cocktail shaker and shake vigorously for another 10 to 15 seconds. Add kombucha and stir. Strain into a coo... Coop? Coop. C-O-U-P-E, coop. Mm. And serve up. Put it in a glass and drink that bitch. It looks amazing. Okay, a chicken coop because it has eggs in it. I don't know. Listen, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. It, have you ever had a, a cocktail before that had like raw egg in it? Because I've never, I've never had, I, to my knowledge. No, I've never had one. Yeah, you probably have. Um, <laughs> yeah, I probably yeah. have. Listen, I probably have. It's probably <laughs> very deep into the night. I didn't uh-huh. realize. Uh-huh. But You're like, I'll have that $27 cocktail that comes in the <laughs> shot glass with a stem. You're so That's right. That You're is. so right. So when you shake it, when you shake mm-hmm. something that has the egg white in it, does it does it uh-huh. make it do anything? Or like, is it frothy? Or like, Yeah, it's very frothy. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Not Don't go this far, but think like meringue. Meringue is egg white beat to hell. Okay. Uh, with sugar, and but but when you do it with a cocktail, it just makes it. It gives it like a creamy texture with frothiness. Whoa. Um, okay. I'm trying to think. Uh, it looks amazing. Seriously, look it up because it's uh, like beet juice. I have. I don't want to tell anyone. I don't want to give away my secret. But like, I want to start a bar eventually in my life when I have money enough to blow on a bar. Yes, please. Um, but I want it's it's got a fuck it. It's like I want to do like a cocktail place that serves drinks, and like you get one of five options: all high end vodka, tequila, gin, mezcal, whatever. You don't get like multiple tiers, and then it's just like farm to table um, juices. So like you walk through the garden, and from that garden we pull the beets and the carrots and the whatever to make the drinks that you have inside the bar okay i will be your fly honey i will be your bar fly just yes honey just come on sit down every day we open well we probably don't know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'm too lazy for that but um <laughs> this very much gives me that vibe it's like get like go get some beets put them in a juicer put it like look at the pictures yeah fabulous so Getting back to my notes, I wanted to say I picked this drink to try to emphasize something that I think is connotative to me, and that's whenever I hear the words habit, word habit, I immediately think of bad habits. Mm -hmm. Do you do the same? Yeah. I mean, I'm only going on kind of when you said the name of the episode, I instinctively went to habits that are bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... If that doesn't tell you the answer, you know, if, if you're, if, this is the most recent example. You just said it. And I was like, oh, oh habits. Right. You never said bad habits. I don't want to talk about, right. No. Isn't that interesting? Co- there's like a connotative change of the word where we all go, uh. I mean, I think about intervention and stuff. So exactly. So it's baggage. And it's this like, oh, fuck. Whereas there's like this whole other side of the word that is like uh, ways to be successful and ways to be paying attention and ways to be da 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 da. So we're gonna balance both of those. Actually, we're not. We're not really gonna talk about either of those. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about the brain. We're gonna talk about how this shit works. Oh, I love this. Um, okay. So yes, yeah, so we're, 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 there's not gonna be any baggage. There's not gonna no. We're not doing self help. We're just having a good time. God mm-hmm. damn it. So. We're going to start with the definition. Um, and I found two. Uh, a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. I think that's a good general sense of it. Uh, more psychologically focused, um, coming from the American Journal of Psychology. That's why I get to say that. Um, <laughs> a habit is a routine behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously, according to the American Journal of Psychology, uh, who defined a habit as, from the standpoint of psychology, a more or less fixed way of thinking, willing, or feeling 
acquired through previous repetition of a mental experience. So, I think the I think that the first definition gives way to oh god bad habits. The second definition gives way to the mechanics. We're going to be focusing on mechanics. So I found this article on NPR about a New York Times business writer named Charles Duhigg, um, and they were just kind of talking with him about his new book, The Power of Habit, where he explores the science behind why we do what the hell we do, um, and all of this is paraphrased. Uh, you can find theirs online, but we're going to mix in some other info on here, too, so stick around. Um, he says, he being Charles, the psychology of a habit starts with a three-part process called a, quote, habit loop. First, there is a cue or trigger that tells your brain to go into that sort of autopilot mode to let, I thought that was an interesting word, let a behavior occur. Mm. The next part is the routine, which is the habit itself. So when we talk about habits, generally, this is the thing that we're talking about, i.e. smoking, biting nails, whatever. Um, The last part, this is the part that I I would love to discuss with you. The last part is the reward. It's the part of the habit that allows your brain to remember the process for next time. Mm -hmm. It's some sort of quick start for the habit loop in the future. Um, So neuroscientists have traced our habit-making behaviors to a part of the brain called the, I'm going to say this so wrong, basal ganglia. B-A-S-A-L, maybe basal but I'm thinking basal, but basal ganglia. Mm, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which also plays a key role in the development of emotions, memories, and pattern recognition. I also personally think it would be a great drag name. <laughs> basal ganglia <laughs> form a habit of me, bitch. Mm-hmm. No, uh, by that I mean all day, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's, oh my God, that's beautiful. Uh, Poetry. Yes, moving on. (laughs) (laughs) So this basal ganglia thing is interesting because it comes from a different part of the brain um, than decision making. So decision making comes from the prefrontal cortex. Yeah. And scientists have discovered that once a behavioral habit is initiated, the prefrontal cortex basically goes dark. So once your brain has made something automatic or has set a habit of something, the decision-making part of the brain goes to sleep. Wow. Effectively, what that means is that while you are even performing complex tasks, if you have made a habit of them, you have this free RAM. You have free space to process other things going on. The example they used is like having a conversation while parallel parking, to which I say that is a very NPR example. (laughs) I really think we can do better than that. Um, I avoid parallel parking at nearly all costs. And um, I just think that I I don't know that that, that that like is that can you make that a habit? Can you make that an automated autopilot thing? I mean, I don't know. I would buy the car that does it for me, but you know what? Oh, whatever. If people do it, if they live in a big city or something where they have to do it on a daily basis, then yeah, I mean, it becomes it becomes natural to you. You you might be really anxious about it at first, and then it won't be. But yeah, I mean, that's really interesting about shutting off that frontal cortex because I wonder that people who have addictions to things, if that is about turning off that frontal cortex in a in an abusive way, like a habit, you know what I mean? You're triggering your brain to To shut down. Shut down. The decision the decision part of it to come down. Interesting. Hmm Hmm. Isn't that weird? There's some so there's something in the back of well, I don't know if it's in the back of your brain, but it's past, it's not in the prefrontal. And then that thing, which also has some sort of control over emotions, mm-hmm. strangely, 
is tied to this habit thing. And then, so the way that I can think of it is like without, do you know like whenever you go driving and like you've driven two hours and you're like, uh, I, I wasn't paying attention. I don't like, I don't even know how I got here. Yeah, it was a recording, but I'm, right? Like your brain wasn't recording. Not recording and like total autopilot. Mm-hmm. Like just, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not like reading and driving. I'm doing, I'm driving, but it's just like not there. Definitely. I know that feeling. I was trying to think of some other examples of that because I I read a statistic somewhere that like basically scientists say that like 40% of your your day, every day is dictated by your habits. And I'm just trying to figure out space for that because I'm like, that's a lot. And I, I guarantee you that I have habits. I don't even know that I have. Sure. And we're, I think that we're going to, uh, let me scroll down a little bit. I think we're going to get into that because, yeah, that's actually the very next thing. So um, at the end of this article, they were doing a quick tidbit on um, if you do want to change a habit, this is this is one way. And I think that this is interesting because uh, studies have shown that people will perform habits the exact same way. And they use examples of brushing your teeth and pulling out of the driveway and even eating. They even used eating as a habit. And they were talking about how the cue for eating is time. So if you know it's near the time that you usually eat lunch, you'll start to get hungry for lunch. The cue to the habit is time. Eating itself is the routine, is the habit. And then the reward is the pleasure that you get from eating. <laughs> I'll tell you, actually, um, I'm a really, really fast eater. Like, really fast. Like, I'm shoveling it in oh, really? super quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, people have even told me, like, girl, <laughs> like, nobody's taking it from you. Like, nobody's going to take the plate. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I have always been this way. And then under the guise of motherhood it's like well i don't have a lot of time i just have to like shovel it in but to be honest right. i've always been this way and um i really think this habit started because we had 20 minute lunches uh oh. in like elementary school and middle school and high school like whatever 20 30 minutes and I was always so social. I know you find that hard to believe that she's a talker, no. but <laughs> she is. I know. It's shocking, but... Uh, it does the body good, It does girl. the body good. Yes. So I was trying to shovel in my food in like eight minutes and talk for 12, <laughs> you know? 12. So she needed the full 12. Uh, she needed the full 12. It was a social thing. It was very important. But I, I feel like I, I set that into my ways. And so for so even in work meetings, for instance, where um, where they were lunch meetings, I have to mm-hmm. specifically control myself and actively think about every bite and the space between wow. every bite because otherwise I'm going to shuffle it in like a truffle pig. Just put it, the whole thing in your, yes. And yes. I don't know how good that looks for the organization I work for. Because <laughs> I'm like, ah! <laughs> like a monster. I mean, it, but it's the same thing about, about habits. Like I think these were ingrained in me really young and if I actually consciously made an effort to change them, I probably could, but meh, I haven't ever really put any energy toward it. The the thing like dinging in my head is that you do know and that you you do pay attention whenever it's in a, circum- a circumstance that you you want to be sure not to do it. I bet you never forget. And then in circumstances where it doesn't really matter, obviously the habit takes control. Thank you, you kind soul. Yes, that's true. But also people have told me, like, my loved ones in safe spaces are like, you eat like a fucking dick. <laughs> you, need to, you need to calm down. Nobody... There's nothing circling. Yeah, You're there's right. nothing circling. You are not a scavenger. <laughs> like, nothing else is going to come at your food, honey. You're fine. <laughs> and I'm like, Arr! Yeah. <laughs> I thought that you were going to say because of siblings, because my dad is the middle child, and he's very much... He doesn't eat fast, but he's, like, got this weird uh, protectionism over food. 
Um, Makes sense. He doesn't have it severely. It's not like his isn't bad. I've seen much, much worse. But he's got like a... I mean, he'll share if he's paying attention. But otherwise, it's, you know, Uh I need my space to myself. Everybody, uh, you know. Um, Six feet, motherfucker. Uh, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I forgot to tell you. Holy shit. This is just a, like, Patreon special. (laughs) This is just a backdoor extra story. It has nothing to do with anything. Uh, But I just remembered. Did I tell you about Albuquerque? I mean... Speaking of, I don't, I don't, speaking of I don't habits, know. I don't, I don't think so. The Breaking Bad house. Did I tell you about that? <gasps> no. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's what I should have. Fuck. Okay. Uh, no, this is going swimmingly. I love this. I learned a lot. But okay, Albuquerque. Um. So the Breaking Bad house, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Walt House. It's listed online. Um. Because it's like a real house, and they shot most of Breaking Bad in Albuquerque, like, just there. Um, So you can find, like, Jesse's house, you can find the DEA agent's house, like, all of it. Um, So I went online, and I was like, you know, Walter White's house, and they were like, please don't go, (laughs) COVID. Um, (laughs) Please don't go, and um, the lady that lives there, if she's out there smoking cigarettes... You, you don't want to get anywhere close. If the guy is out there, he'll talk to you about it for 30 minutes. So just, you know, scope it out. Um, so I went. And sure enough, the lady is sitting outside smoking cigarettes. <laughs> talking about habits. That's what we're doing. We're talking about habits. Yeah. And sh- she's batshit. <laughs> and she's put up... She's put up a iron fence around the house. She's got 14 signs that say private property. And then right behind her, she's got this sign that says, if you want to take a photograph across the street, go across the street, please. And she's painted the house. She's completely changed the way that it looks. She's put like rock garden shit out toward the road. She's got two cones in the street, so you can't park in front of the house. And then she's got this, like, fake turf shit that she's put out there with two chairs. And she literally just sits and smokes. Apparently all fucking day, every day. And bitches and barks at people when they come to the house. And, like, we're ten years outside of that show ending. Like, I think it was eight years ago. She's still sitting out there waiting for lousy old me to come by through Albuquerque on a whim. And pull off across the street, and she's, like, on her phone smoking, and then she, I think, I'm 99% sure she called the cops. Um, and she was like, this is so stupid, ba 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 My friend gets out of the car, goes across the street where the sign fucking says, takes a picture, and she flips him off. I mean, talk about habits. This lady has a habit of... Like, ha. obsessing yeah. over people. Because, I mean, you bought the house knowing, right, I assume. You don't have to obsess about people on your property, you know? Not even, but not even on your property. I mean, because you put up a fucking obsessive. fence. I mean, that's, that's, that's like, what does she do for a living? Extreme. Or like, what is her life? Cause like, Nothing. Yeah. That's what I don't get. So the, actually, this has this very strange tie into habits. Um, maybe that was like a Pavlovian. That's not the right word, word but um, sh- sh- it was mind blown because she's so she's so angry. And if you go online, you can look up 19 videos of her like actually harassing people on the street. Mm. Get the fuck out of here, you piece of shit. You da 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 da. Then why and did it's you like, buy this house, honey? Okay, so she's she's lived in the house for 40 years. Oh. And it's a... Well, this is what's so crazy about it. She's like, well, it's my family's house. We've had it. It's been in the family for 40 years. I'm like, that's not a family house. Yeah. A family house has been in the house and the family for 200 years, 150 years, 100 years. 40 years just means you bought it whenever you were 27. Yeah. And you're now 67. Um, Vince Gilligan... Shot the show. I don't even know if it was in the house, but just used the outside of the house. And my thing is, like, she 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 literally either sits on that turf or in her garage all day, every day, and then just waits for people to get mad at, to flip off, to to cuss out, 
and then bitch about it. Mm. And like, eight, and like eight fucking years later, she's still doing it. And like, my bitch ass would be out there with t-shirts selling it. <laughs> like, oh my God. You want to throw a pizza on my roof? 15 bucks. Get it up there as high as you can. And like other people have these like, move the fuck out. Move out. If you don't like it, if you want privacy, yeah. move. But you, you're. She's obviously getting something from it. I mean, you wouldn't keep. Oh. Doing it if you weren't getting some something from it. Now that's a big statement because who knows her finances and whatever. I don't presume to know that she doesn't. She's not between a rock and a hard place. But as she long had as, two luxury SUVs sitting in her driveway. I mean, then, girl. What is Girl. this? What is this hate spiral that we are making our career? It's, <laughs> she's made a bad habit. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you pics. I'm gonna send you the pics because she it like when you see it, it's just mind blowing. Did she flip like, you off? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course yeah. she did. <laughs> you were probably waving at her like, "Hi, honey." Oh, and then I was like, I'm, oh, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna give it right back to her. You don't, not this queen, bitch. And then I was like, girl, that dog already seen its day. Let it go over there and lie down. Um, I was like, I like, I smoke. I smoke. I don't smoke all day, but I smoke. I could smoke all day, but I've never like smoked in the front yard. You know, like you, <laughs> you smoke in the garage or you smoke out back. The fact that you're sitting outside smoking in your front yard, in that yard, just means that you're, like, waiting for it. You're egging it on. You want it, so. I mean, she seems just, like, uh, ready for a fight. She's just, like, sitting there waiting to pick a fight with somebody. Waiting. Waiting. Yeah. It's mind-numbing. Mm-hmm. I'll show you. I'll send you videos. Or, like, because it's, like, when you see, like, she's angry. She's not, like, leave me alone. She's, like, anywho. I will cut you in my it. driveway. <laughs> <laughs> throwing shit at people yeah Mm-mm. jesus christ so, anyway here's a tidbit that she should she should listen to the show and and take this uh to heart because studies have shown that people will perform habits the exact same way that's what we talked about in the same environment without even knowing it those habits will change in a new environment so on vacation you will put your shoes on in a different order uh, if you want to lose a bad habit Go on vacation. The normal surroundings and cues that built the habit in your home environment will not be there on vacation, so you'll have a better chance of beating it. Okay, caveat question. What about when you want to drink all the time in the daytime? (laughs) What do you do when you go on vacation and you're like, I'm going to break this habit? (laughs) But all I want to do is expand this habit. It's 11 in the morning and I want... Uh, you know, Chardonnay. <laughs> I want a mimosa. That's vacation. Uh-huh. No, actually, that's funny because when I came home from, I went to like a bachelorette party or, or sorry, like a bachelorette vacation or whatever. And oh, girl, I mean, listen, we were drinking to our limit. We were just, because it's a bachelorette party. You do it. That's what you're you know? supposed to do. Yeah. I would call it being friends, but okay. Potato, potato. Anyway, so no, no, no. I, I came home and I remember it. So just to speaking to habits, I remember coming home and um, I was living in Texas at the time and like I had a young child and like adult <laughs> responsibilities and I came home from this like fucking you know uh, massive crazy weekend and then I was like okay, where's the mimosa? And I was like going into the fridge and I was like, oh, that's not okay now. I can't do that anymore. I have to knock that shit off because it's not okay at, you know, (laughs) before the PM starts. Like, well, it's still an AM. You're not supposed to be having alcohol. Okay, well, okay, it's fine on vacation. So interesting dynamic, but uh, yes. That is a good nuance. I think that that's probably... Self soothers that like you are are going on vacation to like relax. You're probably not gonna break that habit. I actually wrote in a joke about that too because I was like, you could put up a GoFundMe to take me to Belize to get me to stop smoking, and I'll be on a beach chain smoking. Like that's like that's <laughs> the point of the fucking vacation. I'm not gonna. You're not gonna get me to stop. Yeah. Um. 
Not today. <laughs> Mm-mm. Not in Belize. No, hell no. Nuh-uh. But, <laughs> right. But there are other habits. And, that, and, and that's what I'm trying to, like understand i'm gonna i want to be more aware of myself going forward of like what are the habits that i do that i don't if 40 percent of my day is habits what the hell am i doing that i don't even know that i'm doing Mm -hmm. that i'm just letting my prefrontal go um i've got a couple of examples um two different sections here but i'll make them quick because um one of them is pretty short actually so target that we all love or loathe (laughs) both Love them. They take all my money. I love them. Target utilizes the power of having a baby as they understand that when you have a baby, it's a change in your habit for years of purchases. So they specifically target pregnant women. Um, And the way that they do that is they look for them to be buying vitamins and unscented lotions and washcloths as signals to a time that all of the normal routines will go out the window so that a virtual or marketing advertising salesman has the opportunity with ads to come in and pitch new shit what? for years. Oh. Yeah, so they, they understand that all every all of the habits that you've built up up until I guess your first child. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Isn't that so manipulative? Yeah, and I lived it, and I know how much Target was in a third parent in this family. So, mm-hmm. huh? And 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 on purpose. Yeah. So I read this story about this dad. He got upset um, because uh, he was getting. His daughter, his 16-year-old daughter, got an ad in the mail uh, about, like, baby stuff yeah. from Target. And the dad went to the Target manager to be like, hey, are you trying to encourage my 16-year-old to have a kid? What the hell's wrong with you? And then uh, a couple weeks later, he came back to the Target, and he was like, there was some shit going on that I didn't know about. My daughter is pregnant. I apologize to you. I had no idea. And, like, <laughs> Target knew before. <laughs> before dad. Before grandpa. Before dad. Yeah. But, right. Oh, my God. And, like, not only did they know, they were specifically targeting her, understanding that the next three to six to ten years of her life. But it's all it's all her. It's all her and her and algorithms about, like, decisions that she's making. And what is she thinking? And and whatever. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they there yeah. was anybody there that was a villain. I think it was more just, you know... Ugh. She was starting to behave in a way that looked like Mama Bear. Ugh. Yikes. Right. Awkward. Awkward sauce. I Which give you like red flag. Yeah. Gives, gives target red flags to then use those red flags as specific missiles to go say, oh, well, you need this, this, this equipment for this, 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 and this, and this will change in the next six months. And you'll need this new equipment. It's just so very capitalist, and it really <laughs> scares the fuck you're out right, of me. You're right. You're right. So I, okay, so you're making me think. You're making me think. Um, sorry to interrupt, but um, you're making me think I watch a ton of true crime stuff and I listen to yes. a ton of true crime podcasts. What the fuck are they gathering about me? <laughs> what, what are they thinking? Yeah, you're on a no-fly list. I'm on yeah. a no-fly no. list. I seriously, think I'm gonna, I seriously think I'm going to show up to the airport and they're going to be like, excuse me, we need to pull you aside. And I'm going to be like, why? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Last week you consumed eighty hours of true crime. You're gonna have to come with us. They're gonna be like, she's obviously a psychopath. <laughs> we need to cuff her now. Cuff her now, right now. Yeah, I don't necessarily have an issue with targeted ads. Whenever like I look up something and then you send me an ad for that thing a week later, that doesn't really bother me. It doesn't give me like the willies because it's just a computer saying that you look this thing up. Blah, 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 blah. This. And the, and that is the same thing. This is this is poking a hole in my like logic that makes it safe. Is that like no, behind those computers are people or AI that is specifically watching you and and targeting you based on where you are in your life, yeah. and what you're looking at. And that's see that now I'm like now I'm getting it. Well, and that that actually makes a lot of sense because our habits of like even the um, even the TikToks that I watch. 
they influence yeah. what Oof. TikToks are to come. And so sometimes I see them and I'm like, no, what is this? Mm-hmm. What is this? No, this is not for me. And it's like, well, oh, you watched seven or eight of these other things that maybe had something to do ba- very basically with it. But it creeps me out, too, that the that idea of, like, we're here to serve you before you even, like, we're going to give you what you want before you know you want it. I don't know that that is a good thing. Right. Like, what, like, groupthink. Hello. Mm. Groupthink. Group buy, group consume, group lie, live. Like, I, um, I digress. I don't know. Um, I'll have to think on it some more because I, I, I've always, I'm not one of those people that's like against the Freedom of Information Act. I'm not against the, uh, the stuff that Bush did for watching terrorists. I'm not like, I don't have this like need for privacy. I live in a school bus with, not a window covered so like i don't really give a shit about privacy um but this makes it a little different this makes it a little more and it's not the like watching me thing that's pissing me off it's the like manipulating me to get money out of me that's the part that's like wait a minute yeah i I mean it, it actually does make sense and it is creepy Ugh, it's it's a little yeah. too invasive isn't it like it's okay that you know what I'm doing or whatever, but, like, don't use that to... Against me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just figured that out. That so <laughs> we quick. just figured that Thank shit God. out right here. Okay. <laughs> that was... Next. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stick around, folk. Mm-hmm. Um, this is basically the last thing I've got. So, uh, I found this product, and I can't... I just... I, I was like, I'm not going to mention it, and I can't not mention it. I'm not going to mention it by name because people out there are trying to make money, and I don't want to, like, do that. But um, basically, it's a shock collar um, <laughs> for humans. <laughs> that <laughs> It helps Love you identify it. when you are starting in on one of your bad habits. And so it's a bracelet, and they're like, it'll wake you up in the morning by giving you individualized vibrations and then if if you're a heavy sleeper it will send safe electrical pulses to the brain and i was like mm, <laughs> no 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 <laughs> so it will taser you is what you're telling me it, exactly exactly <laughs> it'll just yeah neat that sounds like um, something i want to spend my money on love it want to be tasered let's do this by the Buy the equipment and the membership to keep the product working. It is. Yeah. Woof. Oh, my God. Uh, so they advertise the product with this long list of, quote, bad habits. And I just got to get your input here. I'm going to fly through them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I just don't know that this is even I, like some of these. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's a bad habit. Is a shock collar on my wrist going to help that? So you've got one through 16. And I'm just going to read them without the numbers. Swearing trichotillomania which is pulling your hair oh, out oh yeah uh, trick trichotillomania yeah mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. which i think i have um do you pull your hair out? picking your nose i do i not like by bunches but like one at a time throughout the day yeah, yeah okay picking your nose smoking cigarettes Biting your fingernails, drinking coffee, drinking tea. That doesn't sound like a habit. That sounds like drinking to me. That just sounds like hair picking again. That's in there twice. Watching reality television, eating fast food, alcohol, parentheses, if you think you may be an alcoholic, please get professional help, (laughs) not the shop collar. Oh, my God. Emotional shopping, spending on credit cards, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Hmm. What? Reddit? Reddit. People are obsessively on Reddit. That is exhausting. <laughs> I am very tired after three minutes on Reddit. But listen, I don't judge you. <laughs> we all have our own habits. You've got like, like, do you have to carry a separate battery pack? Like, does the thing just vibrate all fucking day, or like, what? If if those are ha- if watching reality television is a bad habit, <laughs> is everything a bad habit? The answer is yes. And you should feel guilty about it. Is yes. Um, I, I remember I never bought it because obviously I'm not masochistic. But there was um, a, a product that came out a couple of years ago that was like a fork 
that would vibrate in your mouth if you were eating too quickly. Now remember, five minutes I ago, remember that. I told you that I <laughs> shovel in food like I'm the alpha and fighting off all the omegas. But mm-hmm. I would never want that kind of because there's another like sort of self acceptance when you have to look at your own habits and say like, okay, I wish to change. It's uncomfortable. I don't want a fork vibrating to tell me that I'm screwing up how I'm eating. <laughs> That's too fast. <laughs> That's offensive to me. That's a little invasive. It's offensive. It's, That's a good word for it's it. It's offensive a- to me. I am eating the way that I eat. Thank you. But I don't know. I, it's that same thing, though. Like, you have to come to a place where you're willing enough to change your habit. And there's just a certain amount of real self-acceptance and like, no, I re- this really isn't serving me anymore. I don't like it that you have to come to before you change it, because otherwise you're just going to slip back into that habit. Why would you not? <laughs> Why would you not? Right. It's a habit because it works for you. Like, why? Because, it, exactly. Exactly. And I think that that's a really good way to link the close here. Because, as I said a couple times, like, I was trying so very hard and not to make this some sort of, like, self-help blah, episode. Um, but I did find this golden tidbit. And it's not necessarily about ending a bad habit. Though I think that you could use the same strategy to replace the bad habit with a good habit. I've just never heard this. And I think that, you know, I've heard the like, don't do it. Don't do it for 21 days. Focus on, you know, something else. Distract yourself with this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Um, If you were trying to start a new habit, and the example was running, say running. Start ridiculously small and grow from there. So... If you want to run a marathon, start by putting on shoes and running shorts the first day. And then the next day, go outside with that gear on. And then the next day, walk a block and move up from there. I the, love that. the science of it is don't give yourself a reason to not do it because you won't. And you'll burn out too quick if you leap to the top of it really quick. like To the finish line. Yeah, I want to run a marathon, so I'm going to run... 10 miles today. That's stupid. Nobody, like, and I never ran in my life, and now I'm going to run 10 miles today. Right. Who are you, honey? Right. <laughs> yeah. Honey. Exactly. It's, it's, if you give, it, it, it has to start so small that you cannot say no. You would feel stupid and ridiculous saying no to. Well, it's about outsmarting your habit, right? You have to be so exactly. under the radar. You have to do it so small and incrementally that your habit forming or opposition, whatever that opposition of habit, you know what I mean? Like the thing that fights the habit, you got to get under the radar and do it so small that it doesn't notice it. And then you do it small enough every day. And then before you know it, it's, it's where it is. And it never, it never triggered a warning, right? It never triggered the alarm. Right. Right. Keeping the the prefrontal active, keeping your decision making active or mm. going under it and, and, and keeping, you know, don't like tricking yourself completely Very good. into just getting it done. I like it a lot. I think that I'm going to try to, I mean, I, I got to figure out what I do. But, you know, then again, I do all of those things, like my nails. Well, and it's the same thing, even stuff. making the list, even making the list is too big, Right. You have to yeah. don't do that because that's the same. You, you just said it. You just said that that doesn't work. So you can't make a list of like, here's all the things I'm going to change. Like, you just have to be like, no, no, like just today, it's just going to be this. And then it'll be so small and we'll just make little incremental changes. And then maybe in three months, we'll pick another thing, you know? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. Listen, I don't know. I like it. I have a question for you before we wrap up, and I know you have more, but I, I just have a, a random question. Because you said we tend to automatically go to bad habits. Can you tell me, have a moment to think about it, but can you tell me a good habit that you have? Like, you have, I mean, you do, you have one, you're alive, hello. Like, <laughs> you know, you didn't do anything detrimental to yourself today there's obviously habits that help 
<laughs> so uh, is there anything that you want to share that is like, here's a good habit that I do that I Oof. would not change? Or if I changed, I would just tweak a little bit? Okay. Um, huh. I don't know if this is a personality trait or a habit, and it may be both. But I have a, I have a pre, I don't know the word to say that. Is it disposition? I have a pre disposition to be curious, but I think I make a habit of paying attention when I want to know more. So like if something happens or if I see something that I don't like or something activates that activism part of my brain, I I have a habit of like sitting on it and like cutting time out to figure out what I'm feeling. Mm. I think that that's a habit. That's a good one. I think you're right. And I think, I think you're accurate. I think just, just from what I know of you, I think you definitely do. You chew on things after people have given you new information and new perspectives. Is that, is that Mm -hmm. kind of the same thing? You definitely do. And a lot of people don't do that. So you, you take it and you go like, Hmm, not sure how I feel about this. We'll be back later with updates. (laughs) Uh, And I think that's a really good thing. Because I think most people get defensive about it. So I think you're right. I think that's I think that's a good one. Because I have like I'll stop I'll stop what I want to do to do that. If that if it if it's and that's why I think that it's a habit. I think that it, it's 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 I could be way off base, but I think that because it's intentional, up until the point where the system starts. There's a cue and then that routine starts that I need to get into. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? I'm feeling. I don't know. That's. I mean, that makes you curious and that makes you also like too many people come to this place where they say, I know everything and this is what I'm going to tell you. And don't tell me any different. La, 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 la. Yeah. And I think you're quite the opposite. I think you're like, here's what I think. Not really kind of sure. Tell me your thoughts so that I can come up with a better answer or stand for my mind. And I think I think you've always done that. I mean, since I've known you, you've certainly done that. Um, and I think that is a good habit. Don't lose that. I, I think as we get older, we get more jaded and we get more kind of thrown in our ways. I'll tell you, like, there are elderly people that I have known in my life that we're like, I just don't understand these times. Like, I am mm-hmm. I would never... I mean, I, I there were people that I really cared about that there was, there was one that said, and I really loved this person but and admired this person, but obviously was much older and said, like, I don't understand, like, the trans bathroom thing. Like, in my day, mm-hmm. like, you wouldn't... And I was like, don't do that. I mean, like... Mm-mm. That's a habit yeah. too. I I know that's a learned yeah. behavior. I know it's a learned behavior, but you know what? You're a brain and it becomes a habit. And it becomes a habit that you do automatically without actually thinking about it. Cuz you just said at the beginning, I like sorry, you said at the beginning, uh, a habit is like something that is so automatic that like your brain's like turned off in the front. Like think about like the front shop. You don't shop. even know that. You're, the yeah. front shop's turned off, the back door's on, whatever, for emergencies. <laughs> right. It's like that's the same thing. It's like whatever ingrained you, whatever journey brought you to this and whatever validation and cultural reason brought you to this that was what you thought was righteous. You're never going to compare that to a changing world. You're never going to contextualize right. ever. I have a problem with that. And that makes me sad that um, because I hope when I'm an older diva, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm an older lady, I hope that I'm still mm-hmm. like with my grandchildren or not grandchildren because you know why maybe my kid doesn't want to have kids and that's super awesome right. and i'm gonna high five her like those <laughs> kind of, or she does or you know whatever but uh, like i just hope that i am flexible that we don't lose our flexibility you know 
because yes. habits are gross sometimes and they're um, dated and we need to try to fix them because they ruin really, really good relationships. You know, your habits yes. are not worth it. The relationships are worth it. That's a good way to look at that. I've never looked at it that way. I think that that's absolutely right. I think that by the time you turn a certain age, you know, I was arguing with my dad about politics one time mm -hmm. and he said, you know, if I were your age, I would probably, I'd probably agree with you, but I'm not. So I don't agree with you. And I was like, isn't that so bizarre? And I'm like, so is it, there's, there's something that happens with your experience at age to where that mm -hmm. sort of cynical view, what is now coming out as a nativist view, what is now coming out as, um, whatever, yeah. is so common in old folk that it becomes a habit because I was sitting in a coffee shop today listening to some elderly white women behind me knitting. And in Arizona, they were talking about how the governor should be shot in New Mexico because she still hasn't opened businesses. And how can you expect anyone to have a business after two years? She should be shot and killed. And then this other lady was like, I agree with you, though I shouldn't say it out loud. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And I'm like, that's habit. That's mm -hmm. habit. They are doing that out of 20 years of listening to people talk like that. Mm -hmm. They haven't thought of it themselves. Would you actually say that you want a governor to be shot right. in any circumstance? You're right. No. That's but it's exactly some sort right. of insensitivity habit. And they want to talk about me smoking. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> no, I get it. Oh, my God. That's so profound. That's so interesting. Well, listen, we're going to be old people one day, and we need to do better by, you know, That's right. Example. We're going to hold each other to it, baby girl. Let's just That's be right. awful. I mean, like, awful in, like, a good way. We're, like, you know. That's right. Our, good trouble. Our children's generation will be like, oh, God, this is so hard. I don't know what happened. And then our grandchildren will be like, this is fucking awesome. They're the most awesome <laughs> people that I've ever met in my life. And we're like, we did it right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Leading la revolution, baby. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. Mm -hmm. That really is all I have, though. Um, yeah. This was profound. Got Honey, a... this was really excellent. I need you to know, like, this was really thought-provoking and something that I'm going to take inward uh, and think about because I need to look at my own habits and just see... Because if you look at your own habits, just observe, then you can come to a place of editing if you choose, right? Right. You can't right. if you don't look at it, if you just live it and don't think about it. But if you actually look inward and say, what are the things that I'm prone to do in certain situations? You know, uh, and that can be anything from how you sleep or you know, what you choose for breakfast to, you know, <laughs> the mimosa at brunch time. Just kidding. I don't have yeah. mimosas because there's one. <laughs> so <laughs> kidding. Kidding. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I need to look inward and, and study it a little bit more what you just taught us because I think there's something really good here. And I think if in the name of just being a better person, like this is it this is the key you have to just look inward and say like what do i what am i doing and how could i change those things exactly i think that that i i i i, I feel exactly the same way and i want to if 60 percent of my day is me making decisions and the other 40 percent is me not that's a lot of time you know mm -hmm. and if i'm not present if i'm not where i am when I am, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. I, I, I just want, I want to like take a good look and be like, okay, now when am I paying attention? And when am I just autopiloting? And yeah, wake up. And yeah, let's do it together. Yeah, let's wake up. Even if it was only, because remember you said habits don't happen in big doses. So even mm -hmm. if we just said, okay, for, you know, 10 minutes a day, I'm just going to look at what I'm doing at a yeah. random moment of my day. And I'm going to say, 
why am I doing the things I'm doing? Like, again, am I focusing yeah. on work? Yes, no. Am I, you know, procrastinating? Yes, no. Anxious. Yeah, am I anxious? Yeah. Am I hungry? Am I really hungry? Or am I emotionally hungry? I mean, whatever. I mean, yeah. I think even just taking 10 minutes a day or whatever and just saying like, hmm, what is going on in your head and why are we doing this? That's another reason to um, advocate for, uh, you know, um, what am I trying to say? Like um, mental health. Like you should definitely be introspective and get a therapist or whatever. I mean, today you can do therapy online. Uh, Everybody's doing it online because – you know, COVID initiated this system into, into existence. So, I mean, that'll help you too with introspective and, uh, sorry, introspection and seeing where your habits are and what are the habits that you really like and feed on and benefit from and where are the habits that are really just to your detriment and dragging you down. And I think that kind of thing could be really helpful and, you know, it's worth it. So if anybody is struggling, Beautiful. you should, with habits, uh, good, bad, probably bad, um, if you're struggling, you should consider, you know, looking into just getting a, you know, speaking to somebody about it and just see, see if it's, see if it's worth Absolutely. your time or not. And then decide from there. If it's not worth it, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best thing that I've ever done. And I don't, I haven't done it in a while, but um absolutely one of the one of the most um the, the most learning i did about myself quickly was that mm. doing some counseling and um i think that you just made a really cool point that it's like even in studying like your habits the ones that you want to get rid of you'll find good ones that you want to keep too so like it's not all bad work that there's like you'll find good and bad mm-hmm. it's not all going to be just trash you know and you can find things to celebrate and champion and do more of and things that feed you and then things that take away from you. So, um, well, thank you so much for coming along. And, um, I, yeah, I think that we've uh, like, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have something to think about and, um, we'll circle back. Yeah. And, um, me too. Thank you. Um, if you haven't already, Go on to wherever you get your podcasts and rate us. It helps people find us. We'd be so appreciative. Mm-hmm. Also, if you have any ideas for topics that you would like covered, keep sending them in. We're amateurintellectuals at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook. Um, vote by mail. Vote early. Vote every chance you can. <laughs> uh is there anything else did i miss something uh no i mean listen we're here every sunday uh if you're behind on episodes please enjoy the binge uh (laughs) otherwise um (laughs) we're here every sunday evening we are up sooner on youtube than we are on uh our regular podcast avenues so if because we're trying to um incentivize (laughs) The uh, YouTube version. Listen, we put on our best garments and we (laughs) set up the lighting for you. If it was just audio, we would not give a shit about our looks. Listen, you can't see me right now, Kendall, but um, (laughs) I look like I'm not kidding. And you will agree with me because I love you and we are on the same page. I look like... Sarah Paulson's stunt double right now. <laughs> ah, yes. You'll see. Cry like her. Can you do the crying like her? The... <laughs> Have you seen that TikTok? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm telling you. I but love it. Yeah, we do this for it. you. We don't do this for us. That's right. This is a lot of work for Listen, us. Listen, <laughs> I, yeah, I brush my fucking teeth today with running water, okay? Yes. With running water. Kendall so. brushed his teeth. I. Mm-hmm. took my hair out of a water. ponytail and yeah. put some eyeliner <laughs> yeah. on listen we do this for you not us okay kendall doesn't That's need right. to see me in eyeliner he's seen me always like eyeliner no eyeliner i don't need it i don't need it in my life this is for you <laughs> so reward us by rating us and watching five us. stars <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, Excellent. that was a tangent. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, we're gonna do it. Are you ready? We're gonna do the three, two, one. Ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Bye. Bye.